Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my sailors out there. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to the stream. I'm going to take a moment really quick and get some links sent out so that everybody else can join us, and I will be starting stream in just one moment. All righty, let's get started here. Hello, everybody in chat. Let's have a good stream today. Uh, we're going to start streaming. Uh, we're going to be streaming, hello, everybody, the Epic Storm version 13.8 today. This is a new version that includes a spicy little removal spell, uh, probably one of the more playable cards in Streets of New Capenna, Void Rend. And we're going to be using it as a non-green answer to a, a counterbalance out of the blue decks. Uh, hi, Jode. Uh, Jode, hey. I'm really glad that you enjoyed the last stream. And hi, Chris. Yeah, uh, Void Rend is really an exciting upgrade. Yeah, check out the Mox Field. The links are going to be in the video description for our live feed. And um, it's going to be really interesting. It is going to be a card that we bring in against control decks and blue decks for counterbalance specifically. Um, because of that, we're looking to be casting this spell um, after a little while. We have mana under us. We have the ability to spend three mana on this removal spell. This is going to be something preliminary that's worth testing. Three mana is a little bit more than an Abrupt Decay in a hyper-efficient combo deck like this, but um, it is something that I believe that Jax had mentioned immediately on seeing that we moved to four colors, and it's something that had been tickling the back of our brain, and here it is, version 13.8. I don't believe that any of the team have actually been able to cast Voidrend in any of our tested matches, um, but the uh, the potential is all there. We're just waiting to see if it pays out. Hey, Bryant, uh, your favorite TES streamer. I think that I might be the only one, but I appreciate the sentiment nonetheless. Um, we're going to get started. I'm going to get a match after I join this league and start in on everything. Now, unfortunately, I thought that I had fixed this problem from the last stream, but the chat isn't actually showing up above my head, like right here. Um, it should be, but I think that I still have yet to figure out that process. Um, maybe I'll be able to get it done in some downtime, but we're not going to worry about it yet. You can check the Comments on the, well, if I'm over here, you're going to be looking that way uh, on the comments and the, the live chat. We won the die roll in our first match against the Grim Lava Mancer, and I would like to play first. Our opponent has revealed a Yorion. Um... These days, with the white initiative being out, I would assume that this is going to be some kind of control deck. 
but I made the mistake of making that assumption in paper. Turns out my opponent was just playing death and taxes. So it still could be the de- the death and in taxes. The deathing and taxes. Death and taxes. Uh, but either way, I think that this hand is a reasonable keep. We're going to hope that it's a blue deck and really pay off with making land drops and cantripping, a burning wish, finding a galvanic relay might be exactly what we need. Our opponent um, has also kept their seven. We're going to start off with the underground C. We don't have any black cards to pay off yet, and if this per- perchance gets wastelanded, um, four color control decks are playing wastelanded, the uh, volcanic island is going to be a protected red source. Now, they could just play a red source themselves and cast a grim lava mancer. Um, but it actually looks like it's going to be death and taxes. Look at that. A little bit of a blast from the past. Hmm. I think that we're going to deploy a lot of our zero drops and a wish claw talisman to get underneath a Thalia. Unfortunately, they started out with Mom, which is a great start from them because it means that they can protect their mom, their Thalia with the Mother of Runes. Um, and I can't prismatic ending it as efficiently as I would like to. But starting off with a wish claw talisman on turn two never feels bad, especially when you know it's going to resolve. I am going to crack this Mishra's Bobble. Still 2-3. Oh, you know what? I thought that I had fixed that, but you are correct. My record box is going to be incorrect. Uh, they have shown us a Rashadden port. On top of their deck. Now we've got our 0-0 zero, zero pure record, untouched. See what we draw from this bobble. A bad lance. Making land drops is never going to be a bad thing. Uh, if I do need to activate this burning wish to find a prismatic ending or something like that, I won't have to to uh, crack this lotus petal. They seem more than content to port me in my upkeep, which I think is a little bit of a risky move from them. Um, I'm going to spend, mm, no, I, I guess I should just let this happen. I thought about brainstorming in my upkeep, but I wouldn't be really seeing the most out of this brainstorm. Ad nauseum is a great draw. Um, depending on what our brainstorm yields, we can actually ad nauseum in response to a port on our upkeep next turn and that looks like exactly what we'll be able to do we're going to be able to make our land drop and imprint a hmm probably the burning wish underneath the right of flame which means we can put back plateau and Burning Wish. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And play our Badlands out as our land for turn. And this is going to give us the requisite five mana. Hold up, let me just make sure that I'm not missing something. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, I can just add nauseum right now. You know, I could count and I can find a dark ritual off of this wish claw talisman and that gives us the requisite five mana uh the whole you can start stop shouting at your screens is uh, very real we're going to add nauseum instead of passing the turn i like the sound of that pull out our revealed zone over here which might be a little preemptive but i would like this to resolve Ah, we are going to McKinley this nauseum. 
Oh, uh, this is actually not as bad as it could be. Yeah, Stephen, you uh, definitely were a little bit ahead of the curve there. I could have taken a little bit extra time and made sure that everything worked out just fine. Okay, we're at four. I'm not going to show that my deck does not contain tendrils of agony. We're going to stop here. We do have lethal. You know, normally when I'm playing leagues by myself, I have a little bit more time um, to take a little bit of a break, make sure that I'm not missing something uh, too egregious. Uh, but we're working on honing that and streaming at the same time. However, this is exactly the right amount of mana. We don't even need to worry about cracking these Lion's Eye Diamonds. This is a turn three win against Death and Taxes on the draw, which feels pretty good. If you can hear my cat in the background, he thinks that it's time for second dinner. He's a uh, regular old the regular old Marion Pippin and wants two of every meal and only gets one. Um, as far as sideboarding in this kind of matchup. Hey, Tim. Uh, it's good to see you in chat. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm glad that you can make it as well. We're going to bring in Prismatic Endings, Slaughter Pact, and Thought Seizes. Uh, chat box is not working, Bryant. I thought that I had the right link, and um, it turns out that it is not. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, probably in between rounds, and run an ad or so, and we're going to make sure that it gets working again. Right now... TXO, hello, welcome to chat. Right now, I'm going to sideboard. I believe we're going to be taking out a couple of silences and Mishra's Bobbles. Uh, the Galvanic Relay package is kind of tied in with Mishra's Bobble, so cutting a couple of bobbles makes Galvanic Relay uh, worse, but we're taking out all of our relays, so it's not that big of a deal, and we still have more than enough artifacts to make Mox Opal well. Uh, so, hell yeah, the strange multicolor card, Void Rend. Welcome to the channel. We are going to be playing a an uncounterable removal spell and it's going to be functioning as counterbalance removal essentially uh, this used to be an abrupt decay we cut green and this is going to be an on color uncounterable removal spell so that we can still play against blue decks and work out just fine let's see let's submit this deck before we forget Spicy MTG. Hey, James. How's it going? It's good to see you. Uh, welcome to the stream. We're playing against Death and Taxes, and oh boy. We are one mana away from a turn one ad nauseum, but I can't even have a thought seize to delay that or a white card or a white producing mana to chant them in their upkeep and silence, uh, silence walk them as it is. Um, I am going to keep this and hope that we get paid out. This might be a little risky. Um, yeah, Chromox is going to be a great draw. No problems. Uh, that's why you play a combo deck because the top deck is always there. You just uh, need to believe in it. Hmm. Our opponent has mulliganed to five. Now they might be mulliganing to a turn one deafening silence. Uh, the risk is high, Jode, um, for sure. Uh, heart of the cards, indeed, Jay Turnham. Let's see what happens. Is it going to be a turn one deafening silence? It's not. Okay, they did mull to five, and we find a lion's eye diamond. Well, that's not exactly what we were looking for. Um, it's mana, but we weren't specific enough. 
I am going to make sure that I cast all of my zeros, though. Um, hey, Sleepy. Uh, Alka okay, yeah. Well, you have to make a choice. Or dual stream. I don't know. Choices need to be made. Do you want to see Void Rend cast, or do you want to see... Thalia cast. I don't want to see Thalia cast, but you're going to see it. You would have seized there. Hmm. See, I didn't want to get rid of my black sources, but I guess I needed to draw another mana producer anyway. Um, they're a breathing person. Yes. But, hmm. Yeah, Steven, you and I both were really looking for something different there. Um, hmm. They mulligan to something, yes, but I, um, they mulligan to five and didn't turn one something, so it kind of makes sense that they are a thinking and breathing person. I was just going to disrespect the DNT player, to be honest. Now, I could deploy a Wishclaw Talisman um, by burning a Dark Ritual, but that doesn't sound like the greatest. I think that right now I'm going to be drawing to a prismatic ending okay this is quite the start for them Thalia gets in first strike it is Yeah, unless I draw a prismatic ending. So, okay, this is going to be it. That's it. Uh, misplays on my end. Got a little bit too greedy on a keep and then should have thought seized there uh, instead of just hoping that they didn't keep anything. Um, but we're going to resubmit this and Sleepy's happy either way. Either Storm wins and he's happy or... Thalia wins and still happy. Uh, we are not running Massacre TXO. Uh, death and Taxes is not really a factor in the meta, as my opponent would uh, argue, but it's really a white initiative matchup that is a planes matchup, and they have uh, bigger butts than two. It's not really a card that we can really play reasonably. If one of these was a Thoughtseize, I think that I would keep this hand. But as it stands, this is not going to be a keepable hand. Um, if I had another artifact for turning on Mox Opal, I think that this would be keepable. But we're going to mulligan to a little bit more of an aggressive hand. Um, this is also not keepable. Hmm. So I could potentially keep this and um, I kept a seven. Hmm. We are hanging on to a dream. Get punished in game two and then mulligan into oblivion in game three. That sounds about right. I think that I'm going to ship this and go to four. This is four. So it would be one, two, three, four. No. Well, we can um, put back Dark Ritual, Prismatic Ending, Plateau, and hope to hit something really spicy with this Brainstorm. Or we can go to three cards. I don't like going to three cards because then we're really chasing Lion's Eye Diamond, Echo of Eons. And I think that I would rather deploy a bunch of permanents and hope for a brainstorm. Uh, I think that that seems a little bit better. I'm going to keep this, put back a plateau, a dark ritual, and a prismatic ending. Hmm. 
All right. My opponent did keep a seven. They did not start out on a ley line of the void. And we're going to see what Brainstorm gives us. This is not bad. Um, we can draw through this Brainstorm by next turn with the bobble. And we are... Oh, okay, well... Mm hmm That just hurts to see. Um, this is not looking great because of that, but we're going to try our best. And turn one deafening silence. Who would have thought? They kept a planes in their opening hand. What a, what a concept. And, I mean, we have a... Mox Opal in play, and we can certainly rip a prismatic ending to deal with this deafening silence. Um, now they could obviously have a Thalia here. An Ether Sworn Cannonist is also pretty rough, but I'm going to keep playing this out. Uh, this is game three, um, and this is not the worst. Now I have two mana. Um, I could play all of my cards, except for the Deafening Silence. I could play all of my cards through this Aether Sworn Cannonist. Alas, uh, I can always Nas and then just pass the turn. You are right, Bryant. We're going to... Ooh. They didn't do anything yet. They might just be doing the whole second main as a phase that exists. Um, casting a vial. And passing the turn. Interesting. Land was pretty good. So... We're going to Talisman here, and we're going to be able to add Nauseam on our next turn, and then Nause to a good seven, potentially with a Prismatic ending, um, and potentially with two Prismatic endings. That would be nice. See what happens. Our opponent didn't optimize and tap Aether Vial at the end of my turn to bluff a Dryad Arbor. The uh, points lost are enormous. Taking two. Thalia is hurtful. Um, Very hurtful. So we have six mana, seven mana to wish claw into Adnaz. We have the mana for it, but what's going to happen to our hand? Um, we're taking four. Uh, we still have Echo, so we should really stop before we hit 10. Let's hope so. Slaughter Pact is good. Land. There's the Echo. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to flip to seven. Okay. And we drew a lion's eye diamond and we can play out land for turn. And I guess we could have actually just not done that and discard the echo to hand size, but we're not going to be able to do anything after echo anyway. Um,
what I can do is on their turn, Slaughter Pact Thalia, pay for it. Hmm. But then I won't have a white source to Prismatic Ending the Deafening Silence. They strip both Lion's Eye Diamonds from my hand. It's incredibly rude. Should have saved it for Burning Wish. We don't have any wind conditions in the main board. Not that it's going to matter. Hmm. Boom. Boom indeed. This is uh, almost definitively over. I am going to play it out just a little bit longer. Now I guess we could draw a white source. In that case, do I want to save the two damage by slaughter pack? No, they can just wish claw for another one. That seems silly. My cat let me know that that was a bad idea as well. Continue for the content. Yeah, absolutely. What else are we doing? I mean, if I draw a white source, um, which means I'm likely not fetching a white source with his bloodstain mire, then I can pack the Thalia now, pay for it, draw the white source, and not have enough mana to prismatic ending the ether short canonist. I'm doing the math myself and we got there. We are deterministically dead. Uh, yeah, turn him. Uh, he, he's not a Thalia fan. I raised him. Well, we're going to play another league match at try to, yes, we are playing another league match. Um, see what we can do with it. Hmm. Psychedelic germ. Okay. We won the die roll. We're going to play first. My opponent has an interesting name. And this is almost a really nice hand. But we're going to mulligan this. This is a much better hand. And I'm going to put back the brainstorm. And this is going to be a turn to ad nauseum. We are getting a visitor. Um, he's making his way slowly over here. You'll be able to say hi to Angus McDonald. My opponent mulligan to six and is thinking about their six and the tail shows up and is going to move. We're going to show him off to the camera really quick. Angus McDonald, everybody. And plop. Okay. Bloodstained Mire and pass the turn is our goal for the first turn. And then on the turn two, we're going to win. Uh, hey, Mitchell. Uh, how's it going? Uh, good to see you in chat. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I don't pass through my main phase and not play a land and psych myself out or anything like that. Volcanic Island off of a misty rainforest screams Delver, but they pondered on turn one. So who knows what's going to happen. Uh, if it's Delver, I love this kind of a start. This is slow and dirtily, and I can play that game just as well as they can. If it's something like Control, then I also feel pretty comfortable. If it's something like show and tell, sneak and show, omni tell, something like that. Uh, it's a little less okay. I am kind of wishing that I had that brainstorm. Mm. I am going to be content to just play my land drop and pass. We have outs to Galvanic Relay. We can find a silence eventually. We can make enough mana to 
burning wish into something good, uh, using wish claw as our protection. There's a lot that we can do right now. We don't need to just jam. The days of the epic storm just jamming on turn one or turn two are long gone. In fact, really, they were gone before even I showed up and started writing for them. Which, by the way, you can check out theepicstorm.com for weekly articles on the epic storm. And I write one of those articles, Infernal Tutoring, where we take a look at puzzles about the epic storm and we break them down with a prominent magic player as a guest every month going to be live to patreon on friday our guest is really nice um we did actually draw another wish claw talisman i think that i might um i realized that i was passing through my main phase i actually kind of want to fetch out an underground sea get all four of our colors and then actually uh test them by playing out one of these wish claws B -b 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 black belcher i know it's on the t it's on the sticker a lot of black belcher merch um the epic storm has a patreon i know you can support writers like me and get access to articles early oh what are we doing here are we brainstorm dazing we are just dazing okay no i would not like to pay i mean that was pretty telegraphed but they didn't hard cast it which is interesting I will discuss a little bit more about our Patreon and about YouTube membership, but until then, if you're enjoying the video, take a moment to like and join in chat and comment a little bit. Uh, tell us how you're doing and how much you enjoy the epic storm. My opponent is resolving this brainstorm at the end of my second main phase. We're going to pass to them. Now, you could have... Uh, yeah, Bryant would not like that. Um, Mountain Walk, I did like the second Wish Claw. Uh, if I was thinking a little bit more, I probably would have actually deployed all of my mana, uh, ritualed everything out, played a Wish Claw, and then played a second Wish Claw. That would have had made them, uh, forced them to have two interaction spells. I could have played around days that way, and I chose not to because I didn't think about it. And that is going to be something that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life, but not something that you will. That's my burden to bear. As it stands, Galvanic Relay is probably the best draw. Bobble is also not bad. That's going to give us a little bit of an out to see what they're doing. They didn't ponder. They didn't find a second land drop. Their hand is six spells. That's kind of terrifying. And they're drawing a Wasteland. Well... Hmm. And now I'm really feeling my misplay last turn uh, because I'm not going to have everything. Yeah, Mountain Walk, I could have forced a response, and I did, but it was only a daze, and I could have gotten a Force of Will and another blue card. I could have him to Torok to them and then made them have another answer, and then if the second one resolved, ooh, that's a good card. Um, if the second one resolved, then I would have been able to galvanic relay or, um, something along those lines. They have played their first threat on turn four, which is a little unlike them, but I'm okay about that. It gives me time to recoup my losses from misplays. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I did mean to turn on a little bit of music for our stream. There we go. We get a little bit of background music. I forgot to turn it on. And we're going into our turn five. Orm's Chant, not bad. I would really like one more mana. Really would like two more mana, to be completely honest, but we can't have everything. Can't have everything. 
the insectile aberration is flipped into it, uh, revealing an expressive iteration. We're going to take three, and then they're probably going to EI into... Who knows? The world is their oyster. Hey, Zach. Uh, oh, another wasteland. Just straight off the dome. That's pretty rough. So... Voidrend is going to be actually for this matchup and other fair blue matchups. Its goal is to destroy, its purpose is to destroy counterbalance. Um, with fair blue decks leaning into counterbalance as a two of at least in their sideboards now, Voidrend is going to give us the opportunity to play a little bit of a slower game into it and uncounterably remove it before storming off. And yes, Bryant, this is a major punish. Uh, this does hurt quite a lot. We're not dead. Uh, yeah, they exiled a polluted Delta. Oh, they're dazing this. Okay, that's fair. I just didn't want to discard it, but I also got a daze out of it. Yes, uh, Steven, our opponent is taking some weird lines. They've got more than enough wastelands to make up for it and my misplays. But it's turn six and they finally put their second creature onto the battlefield. I'm not quite sure if they're playing optimally either. Two wrongs don't make a right, but I will take it. Let's see about this Lotus Petal. Ooh, paying costs. Brainstorm. Should probably pop out graveyards. I keep on top. Okay. Then draw three cards with Brainstorm. <laughs> I guess we'll find out what happens. Days number three, might as well. You know, I realized that uh, this music was playing on my phone. There we go. Now it's playing on the desktop. I'm controlling it from my phone so I don't have to mess with all of the windows on my computer because I only have two monitors. But, uh, now you should all be able to hear it. If you can't, let me know, and I will actually make sure that it gets fixed. I was listening to some lovely music, and you should probably have been able to hear some rattly nonsense. Maybe a little lower. I can do that. Music down. My opponent has lost connection to the game. They told me that they have to reset MTGO, which is totally fair. I'm actually a little surprised that I was able to stream tonight um, because MTGO had a lot of delayed downtime today and it was a little worrisome whether they were going to get back up in time for me to stream or not. But here we are. My opponent has reset. Uh, Zach, yeah. Uh, Got to see it off of Bobble so you could play around it. That's pretty slick. Yeah, that Bobble's a great card. Um, it's really just the counterbalance. Obviously, against Force of Will decks, an uncounterable removal spell is never a bad idea. But um, it's really mainly for counterbalance. We don't have Veil of Summer anymore to protect multiple spells being cast into a counterbalance. So we wanted to be able to do something in the matchup. We'll have to see how it pays off in the long run. If control becomes a thing as they figure out the initiative matchup, then we're going to feel pretty comfortable with our Void Rens in the sideboard. We're playing two. We might be able to go down to one if that's not really going to be a prominent meta contender. But really, time is going to be able to tell. Okay, we're going to take four, go to nine. My opponent uh, EI'd into a flooded strand here. And we're drawing a Rite of Flame. 
I'm content to um, I would really like to cast this Orem's Chant if I can't it's going to be a little rough but I think that waiting one more turn before what our eventual end goal is going to be an Echo of Eons probably I don't think that we're going to be able to deploy anything more than that, but we can ride a flame into a ride of flame into a burning wish, and assuming this lion's eye diamond resolves, which very well might not, um, we can echo protected with a chant. And it's not going to resolve. It's a little heads up from our opponent. That seems pretty good. Maybe I should have just moved to discard and discarded a wish claw talisman or a dark ritual um, or even a right of flame, but I didn't give it enough thought, which is probably going to be a recurring theme here. I need to be thinking my actions through a little bit more. And okay, expressive iteration number four from our opponent. This uh, does check out. I've kept a card on top and their exile is Mystic Sanctuary, which they can play and get a Force of Will or another EI. They are in full control of this game. Let's see what they target. The Force of Will. Makes sense. I wonder if they have a brainstorm to put it in their hand directly. So we're going to be taking six, and uh, they very well might have a lightning bolt. This is game one, after all. Oh yeah, speaking of which, we are, want to know, updated record box. Hmm. Okie dokie. Hey Joseph, uh, what was cut in the sideboard? It's actually, we're gonna concede this game and I can show you directly what we cut for this in the sideboard. So we have two Void Rens and what we've cut are the Pulverize and the Crash. Turns out that with Prismatic Endings, we didn't find ourselves going into the sideboard for Pulverize as much because prismatic ending filled that slot usually was only one problematic permanent anyway um and a lot of the permanents that we're worried about are creatures now we have archon of imeria we have thalia we have um mono white initiative a collector oof uh out of green um green decks and it's just not something that was working out as well as we had hoped. So pulverize and crash for a very similar reason, actually. Um, so I'm going to be cutting the mox opal, a mox opal and the ad nauseum, bringing in two, three drops and with an aggressive deck like blue red delver is, ad nauseum is not at its best here. We can really lean into this, these galvanic relays. And then of course, echo of eons as our engine cards of choice. And we don't need to be nausing, uh, especially if I McKinley my nauses like I have been the past couple of times. We're going to take uh, the play, though. Ugh. Wow. One more mana, and this would be lovely. I'm not going to go all in on... Well, who's McKinley? Alex McKinley, the other site writers, uh, one of the other site writers is very famous for his ability to screw up casting ad nauseum. This person decides to reveal Echo Vion's Galvanic Relay one, two, three times, and it just never fails. Uh, force check them. Yeah, I was actually going to talk about that because Force of Negation is no longer a card that 
Blue Red Delver is playing a lot of, and we actually can do the whole traditional, they're what is it? 37% to have a force of will on turn one. So I can actually black belcher them and put a bunch of goblins into play. So uh, I can't remember who it was before that was talking about no more black belcher, but we can in fact black belcher them today. I'm gonna keep this and we're going, we're going to disrespect them just a little bit. They mulligan to six. I really do like my opponent's username, Psychedelic Germ CC. I don't know what the CC stands for. If you know, let me know. Type it in the chat and I'll figure it out uh, along with everybody else because I don't know what the CC, CC stands for. But at uh, and the festivities, no, not really. They are really not tuning for really low now. Whoops. They're really not tuning for combo. Oh, they're going to force Lion's Eye Diamond. We're going to Goldilocks this music situation, Bryant. Don't you worry. Um, they're determining what they're going to pitch for this Lion's Eye Diamond. It's going to be an expressive iteration. I can play via Talisman, so I can keep the LEDs if I get forced. Um, true. Yeah, I'm just going to relay them. They've cast a lot of spells. Sideboard relay seems like a great time. We're going to hold priority as we cast this Burning Wish. Oh, surgical. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, we're going to pop out our exile zone. This burning wish is not in our galvanic relay pile, but uh, we've revealed a chrome mox, a plateau, marsh flats, dark ritual, lotus petal, brainstorm, brainstorm. Goblin lines are the best lines, Joseph. I like my Empty the Warrens a lot. I actually have a bunch of, um, what is it, unglued goblin tokens, like the silver border goblin tokens that are signed by the artist. And then I get a bunch of my friends to sign them as well. So I have a lot of really unique goblin tokens. Um, I'm going to be heartbroken if Alex McKinley gets his way and we cut empty the Warrens from the epic storm. It's going to break my poor little heart. Okay. Let's take a look at this pile of cards that we have access to. Um, well, hmm, this is not the greatest. We have to rely on these brainstorms to get to places. Um, and because of that, I think that I want to play a Marsh Flats, get a an Underground C. Uh, Steven, yeah, sure, you can sign one. I uh, need to get, I have 20 coming back from the artist, but uh, we can get there, figure it out. Uh, Marsh Flats is gonna get an Underground C as a blue source, and I'm gonna cast one of these Brainstorms after this Lotus Petal. Play around days a little bit. Okay, this has the potential to go places eventually. We can, we can draw through this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put both Lion's Eye Diamonds back for the surgical extraction reasons that were mentioned earlier that I didn't play around. don't think I want to brainstorm again. 
I guess it's actually not that bad. I have the mana that I need in like Rite of Flame and two sources and all the Lion's Eye Diamonds that are on top. This Lotus Petal can dig one card deeper and be just fine. Wow, okay. That is going to potentially be really helpful. Again, the Lion's Eye Diamonds on top. and pass the turn. That was not a great Galvanic Relay, but we, I think, made the most of it. Wasteland, of course. Why not? Um, Delver of Secrets. Okay, they have three cards in hand. I could echo of Eons right now. It does not play around days. It does not play around Force of Will. It does play around Pyroblast. What do we think, chat? Do we want to Echo Vions now, or do we want to Echo Vions next turn where we can play around days? We would be opening ourselves up to Pyroblast, but there's gonna be a little bit of a toss up. We have a Lion's Eye Diamond on top of our deck that we would be drawing into. Should we Echo Vions now, or should we Echo Vions next turn and give our opponent a time to draw one card up to four excuse me i'm gonna wait just a second uh four or five more seconds before making a decision just in case someone in chat has a, an idea echo next turn nardolphin that seems pretty reasonable that was what i was going to choose especially since we can not actually see what they draw if they reveal it off of this delver Delver reveals a daze. Well, we're going to play around daze now. Uh, Jode, yeah, absolutely. I would wait as well. Um, so they had another Delver. We know that they have a daze now, which we can certainly play around with the additional Lion's Eye Diamond. Well, I say that. If they daze right of flame, we cannot do anything about it. Our opponent might be really heads up and daze this. They're certainly thinking about it. And they're going to. That's pretty good. We cannot pay for daze. That's fine. I'm going to play this Lion's Eye Diamond out to play around that Surgical Extraction that we've been talking about recently. And we are drawing live off of the top. We do not know what the top of our deck is anymore. Delver of Secrets does not flip. It feels great. The Volcanic Island that they return from days. So that bobble is probably what they actually just drew. They're going to bobble us. And we're going to both see what I'm drawing next turn. They could have done the Mishra's Bobble Delver of Secrets trick. Oh, with two Delver of Secrets that are unflipped, they should have really bobbled themselves on my turn so that in their upkeep, they can potentially stack their triggers if there's not a non-creature spell or an instant or sorcery, I should say. They can draw that first and have a better chance of flipping Delver but alas. Okay. We drew a Burning Wish. Um, we're going to pass the turn and see what happens. Our opponent is drawing up to three cards, up to three cards in hand, and the Delver of Secrets are not flipping. Scalding Tarn is the land for turn. Let's see what they're deploying. With two mana, it might be a might be a Merktide Regent. We have a lot of live outs. Any land, any Rite of Flame, Chrome Mox, Mox Opal, Lotus Petal. Got a lot of really good outs. EI, okay. 
That's also fine. You've played your land for turn. So your exile is just going to be an exile. Hmm. Force of negation in exile. That um, is a choice. Bobble. Hmm. The fact that they put Force of Negation in Exile makes me think that they already have an answer. But we can at least see that these Delvers are not flipping yet. We're going to go to two. And one of our draws was not a mana. Um... Our drawing is pretty slim. Uh, they have a, a land, okay, and a bobble. Interesting. I guess they just didn't have another blue card, so the Force of Negation didn't do anything for them. Interesting. They have one unknown in hand, and pop these graveyards out. We're drawing live to a uh, plus one mana source right now. They didn't like the top card of their library. Makes sense to shuffle it away there. I'm taking five, going down to two. I can even fetch. They're drawing up to two cards in hand. And we do, in fact, Draw plus one mana. Okay. So we have the ability to echo. We are open to surgical extraction because we're going to have to put the additional burning wish. Wow. Okay. They just had force blue card as two random draws. One random draw. Okay, well, there goes that. We are 0 and 2 right now. I'm going to be a professional streamer and update my record accordingly. 0 and 2. And we're going to see what happens on the next one. Actually, I'm going to cancel this really quick. I'm going to run a an ad really quick. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Moxfield. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Yeah, now it's gone. Sorry. I muted it so that I wasn't talking when the ad was rolling. But uh, thank you, Tim. That's appreciated. And uh, someone. Nice. Okay. Uh, but you can actually... Even losses are really helpful. Well, Mountain Walk, I really appreciate that. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying playing for you guys. Yeah, hell of farting. That's exactly right, Stephen. That's nothing uh, Nothing you need to know about, though. All right? That's just between me and not this microphone. Uh, we got our round three. Scott Official. That sounds official. They are a 2019 leg Legacy Champion. Or at least a top eight. We're going to keep this Galvanic Relay hand. This is beautiful. 
But let me tell you a little bit about our YouTube membership. You can spam emotes like that Bryshock shock that I was doing a little bit before, and you can spam things like sad nauseum, or if you really like a relay that I'm going to hopefully reveal, um, then you can spam the, uh, the galvanic relay emote. We've got some commander ones. We've got a Thassa's Oracle. We've got Rograx Silas. We've got all kinds of really fun emotes that are really nice to use in chat. If you become a YouTube member, in addition to those awesome emotes, you get access to videos early, so you can see all kinds of really cool content before anybody else, potentially one-up your game on a weekend before a video drops for a challenge. We don't have Oracle. What is it? Oh, it's Twiddle. Sorry. It's Twiddle. It's for the Twiddle Storm. I saw blue and it was it was indeed twiddle. Okay. Scott official is playing oops all spells. I regret everything immediately. Uh they're going to grief. So they're playing the Spanish oops that Bryant actually published a video on. I want to say yesterday. You should actually go and check that out after this live stream. But they are playing a very powerful culling, is it culling ritual? Uh, culling the week uh, ritual version. Yes, this is Brian's fault. This is why we're going to lose this. I'm considering conceding, but we if they don't win on turn one, we can still do things. Like we can draw into a miracle brainstorm. So I, I think that it would be a little bit of a preemptive concession on my part. Yeah, calling the weak. Calling ritual is the Golgari one. Calling the weak is the one that allows you to sack. Okay, here we go. Nardolphin, you were probably right. Um, the fact that they bolted themselves for this but this is an inter this is the deck for what it's worth. They're playing zero mana artifact creatures and culling the weak to get your four mana. It's not as consistent as regular oops all spells with Elvish Spirit Guides because instead of drawing you need a lot more going on. Uh, we are gonna concede this game, but it's probably worse than regular oops all spells, but it is a new fun fun variant that exists right now and uh our opponent is making the best of uh the situation we're going to take these thought seizes in and take out the galvanic relays that i was so excited for on our turn one that we never actually got to see it, yeah tim it really does mull pretty hard um and not well you need an opening hand early that looks good because if you're mulliganing to four or three um it doesn't convert those mulligans to wins as readily as the regular oops all spells variant does at least from what i've seen you do accept responsibility someone screenshot that he accepts responsibility for these actions of losing this legacy match uh they bolted and then griefed me probably knew they were going to win i agree um on the off chance that they were griefing into a um an under not a yeah an undercity informer that one's the one with the activated ability um we had the potential of of having a past the turn pile Past the turn pile. This is not Doomsday. A past the turn combo from Oops All Spells. This is an unkeepable hand against Oops All Spells. We're going to mulligan this. Orm's Chant is a really good card against Oops. Um, this version of Oops plays for grief and a lot more discard, I believe. Um, it's not something that I want to rely on. Um, I would mulligan to five before I keep this hand, I, I think. Uh, Chant certainly can get them. 
Um, this version is not going to be some, playing something like Memory's Journey to recycle their uh, their graveyard. Uh, three cards. But this is beautiful. Okay, we're going to keep this five. Yeah, make sure they pick the target before I cast it. Makes sense to me. We're going to bottom this underground C and this brainstorm. Turn one echo. We're not going to bother thought seizing them for what it's worth. It's not going to work out like we want it to. Okay, play a fetch land that can be any color after this echo resolves. And we are going to force our opponent to mulligan to a hand that they did not want, which is probably the best thing about echo against oops all spells. Uh, we obviously have the potential to win with two cards, uh, two mana. Uh, wow, yeah, this does it. Okay, cool. I'm going to I'm going to shut up and I'm going to cast spells and win the game. I like that. That sounds like a good plan to me. It sounds like a good plan to my cat as well. Who's the turn one deck now? Uh just just wait a little bit before you say that, Bryant. Uh just like just one more game. One more game, just in case. Yeah, Steven, it's lovely. Uh, breakfast? Uh, yeah, my cat, breakfast. <clears throat> All right. Let's hope that Brian didn't jinx us and we actually can turn one our opponent. Here to see the 05. I'm here to deliver, but not for you. Uh, oh, man. This is not going to work. They've mulliganed to six. Oh, boy. They've mulliganed to five. Um, We were just talking about how their deck doesn't mulligan as well as regular oops. I think that I'm going to keep this and I'm going to... Hmm. Should I bottom the second Thought Seize, the Mishra's Bobble, or the Rite of Flame? I'm going to keep this. I think that it's going to be the right or the bobble i'm really kind of hedging i don't know uh right okay everybody's thinking right of flame so we're gonna keep and bottom the right of flame and we're gonna see if scott official mulligans to four you love to see it okay we're going to really mess him up with these thought seizes and we can bobble to draw something um and we're gonna do it to play around a uh, potential grief just bobbling on their turn hey caleb this is actually match three it's good to see you in chat uh actually could you share the link to this stream in our uh group because i forgot to do that but this is actually match three. We're up against Spanish oops all spells. We lost to Death and Taxes, and we lost to Blue Red Delver. And we're in game three of match three, Spanish oops all spells. Our opponent is really thinking about their four. Hmm. Caleb's a local friend of mine. He uh, is playing eight cast right now, which is just fine and dandy because I know that if he's on stream, I don't have to come up against it online as much. Uh, no, they did go to four, Tim. Uh, they didn't go to three, which would have been lovely because they would have just land passed and I would have been able to discard them to Hellbent. Uh, ooh, they, speaking of land, they didn't make their land drop. 
and another land is really good. Uh, I'm not going to take responsibility for my punts. That's everybody else's fault but mine. Um, I've learned from the best. And by the best, I mean my cat. Ooh. Okay. Um, wow. I could potentially disrespect the fact that they draw an additional mana and discard the Undercity Informer and then follow it up with a Balustrade Spy. Or I could discard the Dark Ritual and they need to draw a bunch of things before they get everything out. Uh, Bryant seems to think the Ritual. I think that that's fine. Um, yeah, Nardolphin, we saw that he accepted responsibility for the fact that we were playing up against Spanish Oops. I'm fine with the Dark Ritual. We are going to see, you know, probably should have bobbled them to inform our thoughtsies, but I got stuck in playing around grief when I was talking about it, and that would have been a lot better. Hey, it's that grief. So they were not going to be drawing the second mana, but they were going to be able to potentially discard us. Ah, uh, yeah, I was playing into days like a chump. Uh, definitely not my proudest moment. They pitched the balustrade spy. Okay, which means I can easily take this Undercity Informer if they take the talisman which i think is the pick no they take the thoughtsies okay they think that they're gonna draw out of this before i can assemble my combo uh, it's a choice chromox is pretty all right and right of flame that is also pretty good So this is going to give us the out to draw a plus one. and cast an ad nauseum. And there it is. Find a plateau and I guess a scrubland. And we're gonna cast an ad nauseum. I'll pop out my revealed zone. Um, we have that dark ritual. Uh, Stephen Bryant always cyber bullies me. It uh, it's a little bit like water off a duck's back. You get over it pretty quickly. Um, however, this Adnaz is not looking. The greatest, oh, never mind. We found an imprintable, that's totally fine. Okay. I'm feeling nothing but love, Bryant, don't worry. Uh, finding that imprintable will give us, oh, we had two lines eye diamonds. I guess it didn't really matter, but uh, just make sure we have another burning wish before getting rid of both of them in my hand. Okay, uh, one second, wait for it, wait for it. It's gonna happen, 
It's going to happen. Say my name. Who's the turn one deck now? Urgh. That's excellent. Uh, we could cast right. Um, yes, I think that you were right. I could have drawn an imprintable, like uh, an orange chant that I didn't need that I could have actually used to imprint under the Chrome Mox instead of the Rite of Flame. But didn't do that. I want to see Sad Nas uh, spams in chat. Maybe anybody uh, that's a YouTube member, you can spam that at Nas. Sad Nas, because we almost didn't make it. Um, you can join uh, on youtube.com slash the epic storm. Become a member today. Have really cool emotes. You can have access to videos early, but it's really about the emotes. You look cool in chat. Everybody wants to look cool in chat. Um, okay, I can change my league record. I am no longer unwinnable. I have won against Oops of all decks, one of our uh, least favorite matchups. So that's pretty awesome. While this is pairing, I'm going to run another ad about oh of course never mind here we go we've got a match already up and ready uh carnage thankfully spelled with a c not a k so nardolphin the void rent thank you for asking um void rent is going to be for our fair blue matchups that are boarding into counterbalance in the side that is going to be a, a card that we are on the lookout for being problematic. And we are getting ahead of the curve, having answers to that if four color control is uh, something that's picking everything up, uh, picking, uh, picking up speed as it learns to answer white initiative. I'm going to mulligan this hand, uh, by the way. I am going to keep this lovely hand. And I'm going to put back, let's see, one, two, three, four. Hmm. I think I'm going to put back the Chrome Mox. Uh, Jitem, yeah, Bryant uh, does have some good lines. I think that they need to probably be in the driver's seat next time. Uh, Seems to be doing a pretty okay job at piloting this deck. I wonder why. We're playing against lands. Well, that wasteland. Certainly going to do work. Um, after I resolve an ad nauseum, though. So, like, how much work is it really doing? Uh, let's see. Let's see. I think I'm just going to pass the turn. I'm not worrying about Bryant and I'm not worrying about this bobble. I'm not worrying about casting this mox opal. Everything is coming up gravy. I don't want to play this badlands. Ooh, Rashad and port. That's kind of rough. Sylvan library. I don't care about that. Mm hmm. <laughs> Cyberbullying me. That's right. You were correct, Steven. Burning Wish. Good card. Not what I need right now. I think... Hmm. The Rashad and Port and Wasteland are kind of hurting... Um, our plan to cast ad nauseum because I don't want to play my land drop out and I also don't want to crack this Mishra's Bobble because it's an artifact for our Mox Opal, but I think that Bobble is going to be the play. Um, Caleb, I'm glad that you had fun playing my paper copy of Storm. I really like it and I'm getting signatures. It's not going to look as cool as Bryant's, not going to lie, but it's going to be signed English original copies. With the exception of Alpha Beta lands, I'm going to get FBBs instead. That's not going to go there. It doesn't need to be English for those. Our draw was a Wishclaw Talisman. Not exactly what we were looking for, but it could potentially allow us... 
the opportunity to echo. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jidem, this is one of the better anti-storm hands, and it's mostly because we don't have the artifact mana to back everything up. Um, yeah, Tim, thanks. I appreciate it. It's almost all signed. I'm missing a few things. A bunch of cards are out still that I'm waiting on, um, but it's probably 90% signed. Um, it's a fun journey for sure. Been on it for a few years now. Sorry, I should keep playing. I'm below time on my opponent, and they're playing lands, and I'm playing a combo deck. That doesn't sound about right. And they're going to port me, and the fetch is not as valuable as um, the actual mana-producing land. I understand that they have a Yavamaya's Coast, but if they were going to wasteland me now, I'm going to feel a little bit better. Um than if I had to crack and reduce the count of lands in my deck. So they can they can wasteland my my fetch land. I'm I'm not bothered by that as much as if it was an actual mana producing land. Cause they can crop rotate the uh Yavamaya away and ruin my fetch lands and they that don't have any targets. Concede? Um, no, they haven't yet. Like, if that was a crop rotation, then yeah, sure, absolutely. But um, I'm not ready to concede just yet. Mox Diamond pitches a Taiga. They have one card in hand. Um, they did not draw with their Sylvan Libraries. There's Life from the Loam. Uh, yeah, Tim, they gotta they gotta earn this. If uh, if they want to win against Storm on game one, they need to earn every little bit of this win. Ugh. And they are. Don't get me wrong. They certainly are. I'm going to... I guess I can discard this Wishclaw Talisman. It tells my opponent what I'm on, but yeah, okay, you can have Rashad and Port. That's fine. Wishclaw Talisman in the bin. I was not planning on playing lands without winning the game, as it turns out. Um. They're a Punishing Fire build of lands. This is classic lands. We've got Rishadenport and Wasteland and Punishing Fire, Blast Zone. They're obviously an Urza Saga build with the Soul Guide Lantern, but this is this is classic loam, everybody. Uh, loam. Classic um, lands. This Blast Zone means that they're going to destroy my lonely Mox Opal. because it can become a, uh, this Thespian stage can become a copy of the Blast Zone, for what it's worth, I should explain. Um, yeah, Runner Runner Dark Rituals, that's just, that's just fine. Even a blue land would work as well, because I can brainstorm at least. And that's not bad either. They're hellbent. They are drawing live. Right? They have Life from the Loams working. They have a Sylvan Library. They have yet to produce a win. So I am going to, just like Tim said, they're going to have to show me this win. They didn't Thespian stage the Blast Zone, which doesn't have a counter, which means that they can like destroy all my zeros. Um, I don't know why. But... They didn't do it. Oh, Lands is your pet deck? Oh, man. Lands is like the perfect pet deck. I I think that that's a great time. Maybe they don't know the trick. I mean, yeah. They're giving me life. 
in the ad nauseum deck. Yes, please. So they returned one and two. Okay. So they can, they can dome me for a bit. Hmm. What are we doing? Ah, Minsk and Boo. Okay, so it's not old school lands. We're still playing the busted uh, cards, so that seems just fine. This is a lands opponent that is with the times. Um, even if I draw a, a zero drop, not Mox Opal, obviously, I can um, echo of eons. So, like, we still got a lot of outs. That's not it. Hmm. We're going to discard the Galvanic Relay. They can potentially, yeah, hit me with a Punishing Fire. Uh, Dominic, hey, good evening. How are you doing tonight? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for catching it uh, live. We're going to be playing round four. This is round four uh, against pretty traditional lands, which is always kind of fun to see. A lot of permanents in play, and none of them are mine. And I'm a little hurt about that, but what can I do? That is the Urza Saga that we assumed was in their graveyard. I'm going to pop these out. I should keep these popped out, shouldn't I? Um... They're going to be able to... I don't know if drawing cards... Oh, okay. And they're going to crack for seven. Drawing cards is not the goal here. They're going to put me to 12. Going through it a bit, uh, but you're alive. Hey, that is heard loud and clear from this side of the camera. I understand. It's uh, good to have you here, though. I'm glad you're here with us, and I'm glad that you're going to be enjoying this uh, thrashing in game one against Lance. I'm not a fan of Minsk in the main deck. Yeah, it seems like a little bit of an odd uh, strategy choice. It does go against the main strategy of lands, but more power to them. They've got more than enough permanence in play to do whatever the hell they want. Okay. They did win game one against Storm. I hope that they feel proud about them. That's uh, pretty exciting for them. All right, I'm going to actually look up the sideboard guide for this matchup because I haven't played lands in a long time, as it turns out. Um, you can have access to the sideboard guide, just like me. Uh, actually, I get it because I, I write for the Epic Storm. But you can get it as a Patreon to the Epic Storm. And you get access to articles early. You get discounts on our store merch and cards that are in the shop and things like that. It's actually really cool perks. Um, and at upper tiers, you have um, time with Bryant and tutoring sessions, and you have, uh, I think, discounts on tutoring sessions and things like that. And you also have the ability to have uh, donation decks. That's a big one. You can, you can work with uh, Bryant to have him play the deck that you want. Little uh, puppet at the end of some strings that you can pull. Um, okay, a couple of thoughts. These is the prismatic endings. Uh, galvanic relays are out. A couple of silences. That makes sense. They are sometimes a mind break trap deck, which is why we are leaving in a couple of Orm's chance and bringing in thought seizes for general hate if they're playing collector oof we're got we've got it covered with the prismatic endings uh, they also can be a thorn of the Ameth of amethyst deck um just a bunch of regular regular things hey austin uh i'm glad to see you here as well it's good to see you another local um lance players uh are not a dime a dozen they are needles and haystacks I would like to play first here. And this seems like a pretty good hand. I'm going to deploy a Wishclaw Talisman on turn one and see what happens. 
Unfortunately, I can't play this around Mind Break Trap uh, by thought seizing them first, but I can at least make sure that most of my stuff resolves. Ah. Hmm. You know, I did not think about Force of Vigor when I was making this line. I could have played around Force of Vigor by sequencing a little bit better. Just a little bit better. Um, okay. Well, we're going to get an underground C and Thoughts is my opponent. And I'm glad that we did, I suppose. Yeah, uh, Force of Vigor, they do play it. Uh, it's been a while, can you tell? Um, game, oh, certainly not. I have a Brainstorm. They are drawing a Ghost Quarter. That's kind of rough. Um, definitely not game. We have a lot of draws. Zach, Mr. Stark is exactly who you can talk to about not feeling good. That ghost quarter is a little rough. They know I'm going to shuffle just because might as well. Uh, that force of vigor. Don't, don't tell Bryant that I uh, didn't play around it. Should have led with everything, but the lion's eye diamond. Um, Hey John. Yeah, we are live. It's not the right face, but we are live playing the Epic storm version 12 or 13.8. And we're drawing a plateau. Okay. We're going to see what happens. I would like to draw a black source. Uh, this wish claw talisman is something that I would like to. Oh, runner, runner. Yeah, Jacob. Okay, so the void rend is here for blue matchups, fair blue matchups. Uh, four color control and Delver are playing counterbalances right now, and we want to be able to have outs to counterbalance, essentially. We're getting a little bit ahead of the curve. Uh, four color control is struggling to deal with initiative, but once they figure that out, we want to be ready to deal with the counterbalances that they bring in. Yeah, Bryant is a dad, Dominic, and we're really excited for him, uh, but that does mean that uh, the schedule is a little bit looser you know he's publishing three days a week and then shorts actually tuesday and thursday uh today's short is awesome you guys should check it out um and uh i figured you know it's about time that we pick up live streaming again it's something that we haven't done on this channel for a while and i am excited about giving it a shot so i mean Caracas. Okay. So they have the dark depths in hand. They do have the ability to win in a couple of turns. Ugh. Okay. We're working on it. Uh, Joe to Hey. Yeah. It's not 2019. It lands was, uh, like 2018, 2017. Um, back when you could play the lands versus Grixis Delver matchup. And then moon stompy came in and, messed all of that up okay that's good um i'm pretty okay with passing for one more turn uh four cards in hand i know that they're dark depths life from the loam and blast zone uh i'm glad you liked it i did it's gonna be live every thursday at seven central standard time for whatever w p place of the world that you're in. Uh, you're going to have to do that conversion yourself. I'm pretty bad at time zone nonsense. There's the dark depths. Um, but I'm glad that you liked the first stream and we're going to get better. I don't have the chat above my head right now, but that's going to, that's going to need to be changed uh, soon. Okay. What are we drawing? Lotus petal. Lotus petal is good. Um, what am I going to do with the Lotus Petal? So I can brainstorm and still echo with the potential of hitting a dark ritual, which I like the sound of. Um, 
Yeah, and our dolphin is right. So brainstorm to either LED or dark ritual, but I could also, uh, another dark ritual, but I can also um, lotus petal, dark ritual, wish claw talisman, activate to find an LED and echo um, if that fails. And it does. Um, too bad prismatic ending is not an instant. Uh, no, no. I'm glad that prismatic ending is not an instant. But in this case, I would be able to um, remove my opponent's dark depths. Yes, uh, Dominique, that is exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, Wish calling for LED. The brainstorm was there to find a potential dark ritual or lion's eye diamond off of the top without having to give my opponent a wish claw talisman. But we're going to be losing or winning this game right now anyway. Nothing we can do about it. Mind break. We don't talk about that, Tim. We don't. We don't bring it up. That's not a winning hand at all. Um, Okay, I'm going to make my opponent activate their dark depths because content. Um, but our opponent is going to two o storm, and uh, hey, hey Mac, how's it going? That's a that's a name I see and recognize. My finger is hovering over the concede. Oh, and the disrespect. Sure, might as well. I am not 0-5-ing this, but it's not looking great. We're working on uh, streaming and playing optimally at the same time. It is a work in progress. This is stream number two, and it's going to happen eventually that I have a positive stream win rate. Um, yeah, the disrespect for the content. Force of vigor, your stuff, and I'm going to make a 2020. Did I need to do both? No. One of those things was going to be just fine. Any one of them. But let's do both for the content. Uh, let's see. While this is running, I'm going to actually try to run an ad. I'm going to mute myself and run an ad really quick. Let's talk about the token packs. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. You're back just in time for our match five uh, against Boland and an unkeepable seven. Oh, Justin, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, oh, our opponent is nice. Uh, good luck. Have fun. We're going to mulligan this seven. We're going to... Oh, boy. Hmm. They may, I'm going to mulligan this. This is not really a keepable hand. This is a much better hand. I'm going to keep this. And I'm going to put back Right of Flame and Silence. Dominique, you tried Doomsday before Thassa's Oracle. I remember those days. Those were dark, dark days. I have a friend of mine that, um, another death in taxes. Ooh, hammer time. Ooh, this is spicy. This might end very quickly. Uh, Rite of Flame is good. I just need an initial source of mana that's either red or black. I'm going to uh, pass the turn without making my land drop. I don't need to get hit by 
a Cathar Commando or something like that with a Mox Opal. That's not the kind of life. I'm going to play around Forza Vigor in the main deck in a mono white deck. So that's just where we are now. My opponent thinks that I'm up to no good. Uh, the 1-3 bracket. Yeah, I know. Isn't it crazy? Uh, we are going to be able to put Ad Nauseam on the stack, though. And have three black mana floating afterwards. Um, Hammer Time. Yeah, John, I haven't seen Hammer Time in Legacy in a hot minute. Um, and yeah, Tim, they are... Stratton. I guess we're Stratton by in the 1-3 bracket. We're doing things the right way. Mm. Okay. We're going to keep revealing. We got this one, I believe. Okay. Relay is revealed. We're going to stop there. Play a land, and we're going to start casting a bunch of spells. The best part about an ad nauseum is when you survive it. That's uh, certainly how I feel about it. And they've conceded the game. Okay, cool. Happy Nas. Oh, we need a happy Nas. That would be nice. Uh, like a, an ad nauseum character that still has his arms instead of the stubs. Like, I think ad Nas is on my list of top five most gruesome stories told in magic art. Ad nauseum is pretty gross. Um, let's see. Doomsday Eternal Weekend side table events and... Oh, well, yeah, Dominic, I'm glad that you were out there for the judges. I am sure that they appreciated that a lot. Um, that's a nice thing to, to do making sure that they're they're all okay after a long day let's see i think i'm gonna keep a sideboard thoughtsies um feelings alex can never experience you're darn right jiden him um hey ross yes glad nas for sure i'm gonna pitch that to bryant uh we need a glad nas so you can actually become a YouTube member. And if we have enough members, we can unlock another emote. And if we get enough members and I convince Bryant, it could be Glad Nas. Mad Nas, Glad Nas, Sad Nas. Uh, relays bring in endings. You are correct, Nardolphin, for sure. Hammer does not usually bring play Mind Break Trap. Okay, that's good to know. Um, they might play Thalia which case I could bring in this slaughter pact. They probably don't. Do they play Thalia? Probably. No, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna leave the Orm's Chance in because in addition to Mind Break Trap, they also have this nice kicker that is a fog effect. And that might be really nice to buy me a little bit extra time against an aggressive draw from them. This is a pretty keepable hand for me. Um, and we're going to see what my opponent does. They begin their hand, their game with seven cards in hand. I'm going to keep this. I've heard horror stories about Yu-Gi-Oh events, Dominique. It's not something that I ever want to experience uh, as a first-person experience. Wishclaw Talisman is the name with Pithing Needle. Seems like a pretty solid name. Uh, so, Justin, yeah, we've been talking about this a lot tonight. The Void Rend is for Fair Blue, and we're going to be playing it uh, to defeat Counterbalance. As I resolve this thought sees, I'm going to get into the Void Rend in just a second. Um, hmm. So Pure Steel and Sigarda's Aid are going to do the same thing. Wasteland is kind of a beating. I'm going to take the Stoneforge Mystic, and we're going to play these baubles out. Um, yeah, Nardolphin, you are correct. Uh, Stoneforge is definitely the take. And we're going to bobble them to see what they're drawing. 
and then at the end of my their turn i'm gonna bobble them um we did cut pulverize mac you are correct we cut pulverize and crash to put in two void rends and um it's actually been kind of nice i haven't we're we're still in a testing phase with this version 13.8 um it's a it's a work in progress i have an esper sentinel okay um let's see do i want to prismatic ending the pithing needle right now not really i kind of want to just bloodstain mire and pass but yeah pulverize and crash we're not really doing what we needed it to we're really concerned about creatures at the moment um which kind of stinks because we don't have very good answers for creatures prismatic ending notwithstanding that answers everything uh but pulverize wasn't really cutting it um massacre is really bad against initiative it is the card that pulverize does a similar thing to uh but everything has a three butt or four butt or larger once it gets counters so it really wasn't working void rend though is going to be in for fair blue uh but yeah mac uh we found ourselves finding prismatic ending over pulverize a lot so I'm going to get uh, Badlands and an Underground Sea. I'm going to Burning Wish for, oops, red mana. Yeah, you can draw a card, I understand. Yes, use this ability. Uh, okay, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, one mana away from a peer into the abyss, which is what we're gonna get. Uh, I can clean up the known information. They've played the wasteland and the plains. They have a pure steel paladin and a Sigarda's aid that are rotting in their hand. We have red source here off the plateau and one, two black sources. We need one extra black source um, to get this peer into the abyss online. Um, because of that, uh, mana tithe, yeah. I actually got mana tithed in Legacy. It was, I don't know, some combo deck that was mono white and was playing mana tithe i didn't really see anything um i can't remember what it was now um but they mana tithe me uh needle is on wish claw talisman i'm not really concerned about wish claw talisman at the moment um so i'm gonna just let it go justin you got mana tithe by hammer time yesterday was that in modern or in legacy uh I didn't play this bobble. I was talking about mana tithe. Hmm. Saga's gonna be pretty strong. They don't have double white for the spear steel paladin though. Legacy with TES. Oh my gosh. Was it against Boland? I don't know. Core. Oh, they have a stone forge. Okay. They've got a hammer. That's pretty good. Mono white painter. That was what it is, actually, Caleb. You are correct. Um, okay, we're going to bobble them. Ornithopter. They're drawing an ornithopter. They didn't play the Sigarda's Aid. Do we know why? Maybe a mana tithe. I don't know. But I'm going to chant them in their upkeep. Um, after I see what I'm drawing. Mox Opal, that's not bad. Actually, do I want to chant them? Oh, Jidenheim, I missed your comment. I'm sorry. Um, Bayou Nikkei's is interesting. Five color is kind of rough. Um, our mana is 
practically perfect right now. We have two pair of our colors. So we have underground sea and plateau, and we have um, the uh, volcanic island and scrubland that create all of our colors. And it's great, but... Um, hmm, let me think about this. We're at nine. Uh, yeah, Mac is correct. The... Uh, Oh, we could put one by you in the sideboard. We talked about putting a land in there, but our sideboard slots are very tight and putting a land in there is kind of stretching things a bit thin. Um, okay, so I can burning wish for a prismatic ending. For sure thought that they had a cigar to Um not quite sure why it wasn't cast, but I guess we'll never know. Um, I'm okay with Burning Wish for Prismatic Ending. Um, just take an extra point off. Maybe that's just this pointless. Um, are we dead? I mean, probably. You're probably right. Uh, Thoughtseize, maybe? Uh, it might have been Thoughtseize. I kind of was worried about the amount of damage that we were going to be taking, but um, now they get the, the white land. Okay. Yeah. A&T used to sideboard a bayou. Uh, right. Their sideboard has always been a little... Um, their sideboard plans have always been a little lackluster. I'll say this. Um, the numbers that they are running seem like they're they're trying to answer everything and you don't need to answer everything. You need to have specific plans put in place for what you expect to find, not playing up against Hammer Time, for example. Uh, I think I'm going to resubmit as is. No, I'm gonna board in the other Thoughtseize. Keep one chant in. Or maybe this should be something else. As it turns out, we don't have hammer time on our sideboard guide. Um, I think that this is fine. I would like to play first, yes. Oh boy. This is explosive i just don't have a payoff i have to mulligan this um this is pretty good i can i can brainstorm so i'm gonna put back right of flame i'm gonna keep this and put back right of flame i'm going to um Hammer Time just won the challenge, Tim? That's pretty interesting. Okay. I'll show you what I'm going to do instead of try to explain it on the fly. Uh, I'm going to play a Bobble, play an Opal, hold control, cast this Chrome Mox, and with the imprint trigger on the stack, I'm going to cast this Brainstorm. That was so much easier to narrate as it was going on than try to tell you it beforehand. Um, that's pretty cool. Hammer time landing the challenge uh, is kind of neat. Not gonna lie. But we missed on an imprintable other than this thought seeds, which I really want to cast right now. Um, hmm. I don't want this Chrome Mox. And I'm gonna put this Lion's Eye Diamond back and I'm going to Thoughtseize. Brainstorm lock is really sad. I'm not imprinting. Sorry. Um, really hoping for some payoff there. Uh, Pithing Needle 
is fine. They have a wasteland again. Um, yeah, I guess they can just play four wastelands. That's certainly a better option than the modern variant gets. So I'm going to leave this Mishra's Bobble uncracked just in case they decide that they want to needle instead of wasteland. Uh, nope. Never mind. I'm going to draw through this brainstorm lock and it doesn't matter what I discarded. They were going to draw the Sigarda's aid anyway. Um, okay. Does yeah, Bobble does help things go through quicker, Jidenheim. Um, it's I think I've said your name like three different times, three different ways, and we're gonna work through it together. Um, uh, but it's gonna be rough. Um, I could have looked through the top card. I didn't, I wasn't guaranteed another artifact to imprint, uh, not an artifact to imprint, an artifact for um, Metalcraft which is why I decided not to do that. But um, we obviously drew into more than enough artifacts to go around. Okay, Needle. Wishclaw Talisman, makes sense. Dark Ritual. That's actually a pretty good draw. Um, as far as non-action spells go, it lets us draw into an Ad Nauseam if we have one, potentially. Okay. They have Planes, Saga, Unknown in Hand. It is a pretty good start for them. They didn't have any real storm interaction. Um, just a powerful wasteland hand and that is going to be good especially since our brainstorm didn't pay off and we weren't able to capitalize on their lack of interaction other than wastelands which they could only deploy one per turn and they can draw out of it now um that's pretty good for them lion's eye diamond not bad um, do I want to pay for this? Yes, I do. Badlands. We are paying for both of these. Getting it out so that they are not drawing as many cards over the course of this game. Three cards in hand. They're making a construct. Four tithe in the sideboard. I guess they were holding up tithe the entire time last game. Um, that's pretty spicy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, okay, we're taking 12. We've got to draw something right now. Heck, they even played the Silent Clearing instead of the Saga. Something tells me there might be a tithe. Nope. That's not going to do it. We dodged the 05. Justin, I appreciate the help. It just, uh, it was almost there. Uh, I am, just because I need to, I've been forgetting about it, I am going to update our record. One and four doing hot stuff here. Um, so a little bit of a recap. Grim Lavamancer, we were playing up against... Um, oh man, now I'm going to forget what we were playing up against. That's fine. Um, I can't remember what the Grim Lavamancer was playing up against. Psychedelic Germ was Blue Red Delver. Scott's Official was Spanish Oops All Spells. Carnage was Lands. And Boland was... Um, the, our, our our hammer time opponent uh, Jidenham that did feel a little unlucky uh, but part of the cards wasn't with us tonight um, 
that's just fine. I appreciate you all. Oh, death and taxes. That's right. Nardolphin. It was death and taxes. Um, that was not a brutal matchup. That was some brutal misplays. That's, uh, that's what that was. But that's okay. We're going to learn. We're going to get better. And we're going to stream next time on Thursday. Before we go, I'm going to let you do the whole reminder thing to like, comment, subscribe, uh, become a YouTube member. You can spam all kinds of cool emotes in chat and see a bunch of really interesting um, videos early. Like, um, I think there might be one tomorrow that's going to release that is a white ant list. It's pretty exciting. If I do say so myself, I'm excited about it and you should be too. But you can view it tonight after this stream if you become a YouTube member. Anyway, I'm going to head out of here. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you all for hanging out. I appreciate your time. I'm Jordan, and I will see you next Thursday.